In this video, we are going to walk through a coding solution to the classic multi-step wizard React technical interview question, so let's jump in. So in this question, we are required to build a three-step wizard that collects a name and a country and then shows a review screen. So the name renders a text input for the user's name and has a data test ID name input. For the country, it renders a text input with the data test ID country input. And then on every keystroke, we live filter the array exported from the data countries.js file. And then we show up to five matching countries in the unordered list. So that has a data test ID suggestion list where each item is a list item with the data test ID of suggestion item. And then on the review page, we simply display the name and country gathered so far so the user can confirm. So we wrap everything in a div data test ID wizard container. We provide a back button with the data test ID back button and next with the data test ID next button. We disable the back button on the first step and next on the last step. We also show a step indicator of data test ID step indicator. So for example, step one of three, step two of three and step three of three. And we persist form data when navigating back and forward using immutable state updates. And as always, we do not edit data test ID attributes on any element as they are used for testing. So if I hop into solution mode here, what I can do is I can come here, I can type in a name, then I can type in a country, and that will show us that filtered list. Again, I'm not doing anything with it here, but we'll discuss that in depth later. And then if I click next on the review screen, I can see my name, which is tech prep, and my country, which is United States. And then if I navigate backwards, I can see that state is still persisted. And now if I exit solution mode, so let's see what the starter code is. So again, I can type in my name, I can put in my country here, but as you can see, there is no filtering of the data from the countries.js file. And then I can go to my review and submit page and you can see neither the name or the country is being shown. And then if I navigate backwards, neither the name or country is being persisted. So it's our job now to hook that up. So in our app.js file, we can see it is a simple component with some Tailwind styling and the wizard component. Then looking at the wizard component, here we have some step state and functions which help with the next and back steps. So next increments the step by one with a max value of two, which makes sense as it represents the index of the pages we are on. And as it is zero index and we only have three screens, we will never go out of bounds. And then we do the reverse for the back button, where again, we decrement one from the current step and set it to the max of that compound value and zero again, so we never go out of bounds. Then we have the wizard container, which adds some container styling. We have the step indicator component, which shows the step that we are on. And again, we're adding one to it as we are zero indexed. And then we render step one, two, and three components, as well as hooking up our on click. So the back is already connected to the back button and the next functionality is hooked up with that next button as well, like so. So let's look at step one here. So step one simply shows the name and has an input, which is uncontrolled at the moment. So we'll need to update that. Then in step two, what we have is we have a query state that is hooked up to the input where every time we type, it will update the query value with the event.target.value. And then the suggestion list below, well, that is currently rendering nothing. And then finally in step three, we just have the review and submit header and nothing else. So we know we need to persist the data for our name and country across all these steps. So let's go back to the wizard component. And this is where we need to keep track of the name and country state. So let's create some state called data. So we can say const data set data, and this will be use state. And so the initial value will be an object where both name and country begin with an empty string like so. And then next, we will need a way to update these values. Now you could create two functions, one for name and one for country, or you could make one function which takes a key and a value to prevent code duplication. So what we can do is we can create a function update field. So we can say const update field. And this function will take a key and a value, so represented by K and V. And then what we can do is call that set data function. So we can say set data. And then inside set data, we can use the callback to get access to the previous value, in this case represented by D. And then what we can do is we can simply inline return a new object, again, immutable updates. We can spread in the existing value of the state, which will be represented by D. And then we can add in our key in square brackets as it's a variable. And then we can all, and so for that key, we can add the value like so. And so this will work with both name and field. All we need to do is make sure we're passing in the right key and the right value. So then scrolling down here to step one, well, we know step one is to do with the name. So we can pass in the name like this name, and then we can also pass in set name. 
right? And so what this will be is this will be a function which will take a value, which we'll call v, and then we can call our update field, like so. And then I can simply just give this a bit more space here. And so again, in step one, it's all to do with the name. So the key will be the name and the value will be whatever value we are passing in. So let's go over to step one now. And what we can do is we can destructure those elements. So we can say name, set name from the props like so. And so all we need to do now is to update this input to make it controlled. And so I can say the value is now going to be the name and then the unchanged. So whenever someone types into this text box, types into this input, I can get access to that event. So I can get access to the event and then I can call our set name and then we can simply pass in that e.target.value like so. In our wizard here, you can see this V represents the e.target.value that we are passing to it. And so if I open up the preview window here, okay, we've got a bit of an error. So if I go back over to the wizard where that error is happening, I can see here I need to wrap this in parentheses like so. Okay, perfect. So let's type in our name. Nothing is happening. And I think that is because yes, here I'm passing in the name. Well, name doesn't exist. So I can say data.name like so. Then I come over to my name and I can type it in. So if I go to the next screen and then if I go backwards because we're now persisting it in state, there we go. It is now being kept. So we need to now hook up our country logic. So in step two, we will repeat that same logic. So we can add in our country prop, which will be data.country. And then for our set country, it's the exact same process. This will be a function which takes the value as a parameter and then we'll call our update field. And then we'll pass in the country and then we will pass in that value. So then over in step two, again, we will destructure it. So we will have our country and set country. And then instead of having an empty string for our initial query state, we can simply update that to be country. And so we need to remember that we also need to render the list of countries. So let's import countries. So I can import it like that from our data countries file, which is just in the data folder like here. And again, it's just an array of countries. And so now we need to create a result. And so this will essentially be a function which will return the filtered list of countries based on our query string. So I can say const results. And we can use here use memo so we can first import that from react and so this will memoize the result unless a variable in the dependency array changes in this case we will include query because that is the piece of state which if changes we want to update our results being shown to the user so we can say use memo and then what we can do is we can say if the query dot trim so if by inquiry dot trim so if that equates to true i.e it's an empty string so an empty string is falsy then if we negate that and it's true well then we can simply return an empty array as we don't want to show any countries when a user hasn't typed anything otherwise we were lowercase the query string so we can say const lower equals query dot to lower case again we want to make it case insensitive finally we can return the filtered list of countries so we can say return countries dot filter and then we will map over all of them. So for each country, we will lowercase it again for case insensitivity. And then we'll check if that includes this, our lowered query string. And then what we want to do is we only want to show five. So we can use the slice, which will take a beginning and an ending index. So we'll take the first five like so. And because it's up to, but not including, this will show us the first five. And then finally, we can add in our dependency array and add in that query state. And so then what we can do is map over the results for each item. So inside the suggestion list, what I can do is I can say results.map. And then for each item, I can simply return some JSX, which will be firstly a list item. Again, we need a key. Well, we know each country is unique, so we can simply use the item itself. And then we also want to render the item. And then very importantly, we also have to add in our data test ID, which is going to be suggestion item. And then lastly, I will simply add in a class name to give us some padding, a gray background and some border radius. So if I open up the preview panel again and I click next, well, you can see strangely enough, we're already rendering the list, but we shouldn't be as we haven't typed anything. So if I come back in here, you can see I've called trim, but I haven't invoked it. Perfect. So now the key thing here is if I navigate backwards, we still keep our name. However, we are still losing the country as we are not updating the country state. So let's fix that. So in here, as you can see on the on change, we are calling set query. Well, we also want to say 
set country because again we need to update this state coming from the props so beneath set query i can say set country and this will also be the e.target.value why do we have to update both why can't we just update one well here we always when someone types want to update the query but let's say our interviewer only allow us to update it to be a country when it's a valid country well then here we would need some validation logic so this just allows you easily to be able to extend this to be able to support more functionality within this country step so now if i update the country oh you can see we're getting an error and that's because there's a misspelling so back on our wizard you can see in step two i called it filed instead of field so here now i can type in united and then i go backwards now if i go forwards again now we're retaining that state because we are correctly updating our country lastly what we need to do is update our step three so in step three we want to render both the name and the country so what i'm going to do is just simply pass in our entire data object like so and if i go over to step three i will then destructure it like so and then underneath the review and submit header i will add a div and this will have a class name just giving it some spacing in the Y. And then underneath that, again, we want to render the name and country. So add in a div and then add in some simple classes. So this will just give it a display of flex and justify between so that on the horizontal, they are spaced out. And then inside that, we will have two spans. So we'll duplicate that. So the first one will be the title. So this will be what we're rendering. So in, in the first one, it will be simply name. And then in that second, it will be the value. So it'll be data dot name and then I can literally duplicate that down here and we can have that for the country as well so all I need to do is update the label which will be country as well as the date attribute which will also be country so let's finally test it out so if I go United States and then I go next you can see we have our name which is tech prep and our country, which is United States. And so if I go backwards, you can see the country and name have both been persisted. So let's run the tests and see if they pass. Perfect, the test passed. Let's run the test suite and see if all the tests pass. Perfect, they all passed. So again, it's a classic interview question. It's very simple, but it does ensure that you know how to create compound components as well as conditional rendering. You know, so pretty simple when you look at it like this, but this can always be tough when you have an interviewer kind of watching every keystroke you're making. So if you want to try it out for yourself, the link to the question is in the description and hopefully you got some value out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe and share it with a friend. It helps the channel out a lot and I will see you in the next one.